the security guard was kind of giving me like a little bit of trouble. Like I had my North really? flask. He's like, what's in that? What's in that? I'm like, oh, it's, it's cool. You know, I'm just going to He's like, no, no, no. And I'm like, all right, dude, it's cool. Just, just let me know. <laughs> we need to move that over so people can get through. I'm like, okay, we can move stuff over. Giant and I was like, I was like oh, okay. <laughs> and then we got up there and played, the booze right? And, thing. and then we got off stage and he came up to me. He's like, dude, you guys are really good. I'm sorry about that. I need to get a CD. Really? Like, yeah. And I was just <laughs> like, no shit. My job yeah, is done. My respect. job is yes. done, what right? The fuck? Yeah, I'm just like, okay, dude. Wow, okay. That was awesome. I, I yeah. have the exact opposite every single time we're playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
So the plan was to destroy it because I saw yeah. it. I saw it flailing around uh-huh. on the floor, and then I saw it on the ground outside. Terrific. And I was like, "Yeah, yeah that his his dream was if I'm going to build something, I want to be the one to destroy it." Right. And it uh, looked like it had been in a mosh pit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He had and to uh, cut speed slits into it. Uh-huh. To make it- he could actually mm-hmm. walk around in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah he man. showed up. He showed up in a giant pink elephant costume at the Evil Pie one time. And, nice. Uh, he's he's always bringing stuff for us to destroy. So it's oh, nice. I miss shows of Evil so, Pie. Yeah. It's um, you know, if it wasn't destroyed, if it's just something that comes out every show, right. then it kind of gets routine. It mm-hmm. kind of becomes boring. So yeah. the fact that it was just a surprise one-off event, that to me, that that's memorable. That's gonna last in my mind a lot yeah, more than if it was the same have, thing every show. You, you got to see the one and only robot. So yep. Get destroyed in the pit. Um, is everyone in the band a horror and sci-fi fan? Oh uh, yeah, he is. He's the only one in the band. We just tag along. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I um, loved horror movies as a kid. Yeah, but yeah. sci-fi not so much. I, I'm a big sci-fi geek. Um, not not a big movie buff like Dick is though. But I, I'm definitely the the yeah. the big push on the horror and sci-fi. Yeah. I mean, the whole Sheets of Neptune in my mind, it was wrapped in that, and I think the other guys are along for the ride mm-hmm. with it. But uh, sure. they they like that stuff, but but it's yeah. not it's not like me. I'm totally not, appreciate I'm, it. I'm yeah, one of the Blade totally Runner hat, you know. It. Like I'm yeah, you are one of the Blade Runner <laughs> hat. Yeah. A lot of it's nostalgic, but yeah, Dick Dick really. <coughs> just, um, yeah. yeah, it's yeah, and it's easy for me work. to play off too when I'm doing a lot of the artwork and stuff for it because I'm really big into the comic side of that. So I, I pull from a lot and a lot of advertisements. I'm really big on old ads like toys mm-hmm. and comic yeah, books, yeah, absolutely, and, and like you know all the prizes like the X-ray glasses at the back of comic books and stuff. So I really get to play on a lot of that because that's what I love is the visual stuff of it. Right. Right. I've and never seen a band have more trinkets and merchandise. Yeah. Than oh, that's that's on me. I, I get I get bored and I just <laughs> I've never seen a band personally. with with so many trinkets yeah. on stage. <laughs> that well, too. Yeah. Brain and I like we throw ideas back and forth. I'll send him a picture of something like he's something he he likes. He throws it my way back and forth. But as far as like. Coming out with all the stickers and buttons and things, he just like picks what he likes and rolls it because he's such a, you know, prolific artist when it comes to that. Mm-hmm. It just boom, 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 boom. I mean, stuff will show up one day and I'm like, oh, there's my sheet boot as a keychain. Cool. Yeah. Where'd yeah. that come from? Yeah. Oh, there's a there's a there's a cast of where I broke my leg. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lord. Thought that was nice. That was a nice touch. Yeah. Um. Anyone have to get a new job after OnlyFans uh, decided to cut porn? Uh, no, actually, <laughs> my, all my not, stuff no. was pretty PG-13 rated, so, um, no, I'm good there, actually. Right on. Um, so, speaking about the show and all the stuff, you use multiple types of media in your show, including video. Mm-hmm. Knowing, uh, you guys' uh, almost hipsterish opinions about CGI, <laughs> any chance it might make an appearance at a Sheik's, Sheik's show? Say that, CGI? Yeah. Oh but, yeah. Oh, we're huge on. We love CGI. Oh, oh a lot of a lot of our. Um, I'm, I'm kind of curious. What did we say about CGI? Yeah, a lot of our. Oh, we're not digging this. A lot of Star our Wars. negative we comments is a lot of tongue cheek kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, you guys are we, purists. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we uh, also we we know those guys and we knew uh, their opinion on it, so we're kind of poking and prodding. Gotcha. Uh, we're we're, we're big okay. fans. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we we like the cheesy kind of weird CGI. Right. And, I mean, there are moments, I, especially I, in the. Sorry, yeah. In the first trilogy, there are moments where you're just like, "Come on!" Uh, the 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 Jabba's band redub was was bad. Hey, you Jabba's! Ella, get Ella, off Ella. my lawn! Be- be- take it easy, man. Yeah. Um, that was bad. I could have I could have had Sneeze Noodles not be CGI, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, that's fine. It, so. it, it, I think this is one of those like like early CGI. It's like akin to watching like an early B film that has bad effects. It really, it really is the same thing. You're watching it. Yeah. It doesn't really look exactly like it's supposed to. It's kind of there. You get the idea. Eh, you know, yeah. it is what it is. It's another it tool. It tells the story. Yeah. It's you know, another tool. It's just another tool. I yeah. mean, it definitely some looks better than others and some is definitely more endearing than others <laughs> yeah. too. You know, some of that early stuff you watch a movie. I mean, Terminator like, 2 is flawless still to this day. You know what I mean? Like, like really? <laughs> I love that movie. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I mean, I was trying to figure out—is he serious? Yes, um, uh, that's some beautiful CGI. Like, like yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, I have to agree. Uh, I haven't seen any movies. You know what? Then, so, 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 now, so, so, so now we now we have to add some CGI into the video. Yeah, okay, right? okay. okay. I don't, it's a challenge. Yet. Yeah, I don't it's know that either. Future Josh, figure that out. Yeah. Sticking with the horror thing a little bit, which is, which is more theme parky to you, uh, Calico Ghost Town or Zach Bagans' Haunted Mansion? Theme parky? Yeah. Like, which one feels like okay? This more this, touristy kind of. Yeah, show? yeah, more yeah. touristy. 
Well, I love Calico. There's a really special place. Yeah, in my yeah, yeah, yeah. So Calico. Um, yeah, I. I grew up in Victorville. Yeah. yeah. So I, and I've only been to Zach Bagans once. Um, it was there, my so. my buddy Michael's birthday. He worked there. <clears throat> um, so we surprised him on his birthday. He gave us a tour, and it was really fun. Um, I've never been there. I that's saw, I that's more yeah. museum-y with jump scares. Then, okay. then, so they do have jump scares. So that's a bit more yeah. gimmicky, then, right? Yeah, it's it's it's, it's uh, yeah. I would say it's more museumish. Okay. It's more informative, more walk through, more hands off. Um, this is the haunted mansion right. museum. This is the haunted museum. Yes. Okay. Um, Calico is definitely more theme parky. See, um, I have a special place in my heart with uh, Calico. Yeah. yeah, you actually took me there for my first time, and we did beautiful. a portrait. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. You know, yeah. So oh yeah, we did a portrait yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, that was that was oh, special. Yeah. Yeah. I was in the dress. And, yeah, 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 it was great. And actually, Calico, that was we went there right when Sheik started. Sheik's that that, that was, was our very right. first band when, photo when Sheik's was just Brain and myself. <laughs> no shit. When yeah. we recorded yeah. the first yeah. album, yes. like before anybody else, because it was just. Us two, yeah. we yeah. Ha- did a little photos and at Calico, so Calico special. Yeah. But I'm curious, how does the the Zach Baggins compare to Tom Devlin's down in Boulder? Because I do like that one. Uh, I do really like that one as I've well. Heard anything yeah. about um, that place. Check it out so if you like horror. Check Tom, out Tom Devlin's, Devlin's more self guided. Yeah. Um, I feel like you can read more information. It's a little more uh, film history mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to Zach Baggins being more like serial killer history. Um, he, they, Zach Bagans does have uh, Dr. Gavorkin's van in there, which is really cool. That's kind of cool. I mean, it's, it's really morbid. That's um, awesome. Tom Devlin's is a little less morbid, I think, a lot yeah. more. I like it because it's a lot more uh, visual effects driven, too. A lot yeah. more makeup yeah. and costumes and props. I really like that. So. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Sure. All right. Uh, moving on. Brain. Yes. Awesome artwork. Thank you. And you do pretty much all the artwork, right? Yes. Art school? Did you do art school? Um, I, I've I've been to a lot of art school. Yeah, um, I went to I went to UNLV for art. Uh, made it through that. <laughs> um, I got a degree. I survived. <laughs> I got a degree. Uh, yeah, uh, but I've been I've been tracing comic books since I was three years old. I mean, I didn't go outside and play a lot. I have really bad asthma. Ever since I was a little kid, I still do. I do too. Um, so it's kind of just always been there. Nobody in my family is artistic, uh, but they were very supportive of it. They just let me paint my bedroom, paint it over and over again. Um, That's fucking cool. But I think it was just more experience-based than like art school-based. Nice. Uh, any closer to the comic book idea? We it's, hear that a lot, it's funny and it would be a great that. idea, but man, that's that's a big undertaking. That's one of the first things that I thought of when I uh, first joined the band. I'm like, this whole album could be a comic book. Yeah, yeah. I think I think a, visually a in my head album. when I listen to every song, I it's it's very visual for me. Like I, I see all the characters, I see the beginning, middle, end, I see the climax. It's it's all there. Yeah. It's all the, the storyboard's written. Mm-hmm. It's just my lazy ass not getting it done. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, that takes a lot. Of, it's yeah, it's, it's one it's one of those things though. Like I think with everything else in the band. If it, it'll happen when it feels yeah. right, you know, like, kind of like I'll just it, announce it, it one be, day that it's done. It'll be like, yeah, a yeah. or it'll, <laughs> it'll be like, hey, you know what? I'm starting this comic book. Let's do it. Let's let's do it. that. Sounds fun. Yeah, let's do it. What do you think, Brian? What do you think, Dick? What should be next? Mm-hmm. And then we'll go for it. And yeah, we just absolutely. haven't got to that. Uh, we're always, I mean, we're always working on something. Something. I mean, right now we're what in the middle of the fourth album. Fourth album. Yeah, almost done almost with that. Done. Is that we actually gonna, record right around the corner? Is that yeah. going to be called proof? That one's going to be called Ooze. Ooze, yeah, it is. <laughs> and the artwork's just about done for that. Artwork is done for that. Is done for that. Really? Um, yep. Yeah. I didn't oh. get to see any of it. What? That's a lie. I'm showing you. You've seen okay. it. It's, so it's been a while. Then. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been, yeah, it's been on the back burner. Um, <laughs> well, by the way, we made an album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to learn these songs now. Uh, he usually gives me spoilers. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's the well, one that I, that I, I kind of like shoot I ideas, too. T- um, well, that leads me into actually my first question for him. So... How hard is it to teach Brain his own songs? <laughs> I say it's a myth. <laughs> it's a damn myth. Uh, it's, it's, just, it's just a fun an- uh, antidote. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. A little bit. I don't There's know. a lot of truth in jest. Uh, I, I don't know. He, he seemed pretty serious when he was on that uh, you know, Parsec podcast. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know any of my own songs. Well, I, I, well what, what I, I like to do is <laughs> I like to, to... It's a ritual to me. I do yeah. you know, I smoke a little weed, you know, whatever, drink a beer... And I, I like to practice along with the songs that we've learned, even ones that we don't play. I still, I mm-hmm. still play them. So they're kind of fresher in my mind than they might be in Brian's because he's got a lot of, he has a life. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I have a little bit of family. You know, I, I have stuff going on personally, but but I, I love to keep that um, that fresh in my mind. So um, when he says you do all the guitar work on stage, is that's that, not a lie. That, that's not a lie. Well, it, I technically the rhythm He's section. Being so humble. Keep, yeah, being so humble. Right <laughs> Who now. are you? I'm just saying. Like, I, I, I I try to you know I try to be on my shit right. so that I'm not falling behind because that's one of my biggest fears. Is being like the weakest, the weakest link. Brando, you, know, you okay? You, you okay? Hey, yeah, think so. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 do, I do feel very fortunate that I get to be in a band with these people that are really fucking talented. Mm -hmm. I mean, brain. No, I, I mean, the, musically fucking genius. I, I'm glad that I'm able to throw lyrics in with that that are, are fun. Uh, Brando, brilliant <clears throat> guitar player, and no, I've heard you play stuff. That, I, that brain's like, what was that again? Oh, thanks, Brandon. Yeah. You know, like, like Still, don't suck like show. Floor. I'm like, that's pretty, uh, good. Like, that's pretty good. Okay, yeah, we're on it's seven. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, the antics that we do on stage, I mean, brain is like, hey, Brando, cover this part because I want to do this now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, he... And I, did, like, I noticed there was a bit yeah. of talking on, on yeah. stage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, everything is pretty much off the cuff. Yeah. You know, Val's brilliant. You're on drums now. So that's amazing. That is the thing when we do play live. Me and Brandon, me and Brandon do know the entire song. I'll know Brandon's part. Because, I mean, shit, as soon as Damn, we started at Dive Bar, I fucking hit one thing on my pedal board and it snapped off. I was like, cool. It uh, snapped first, off? First 10 yeah. seconds of this whole set. So I'm like sitting there and I look but, over at Brandon. Brandon's just playing my shit. I'm like, cool. And I like walked over, dealt with it, and came back. And we were no, I, I can't play everything. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you remember, Dive Bar used to have like the stage, a little gap, and then the big subwoofers on the floor. Yes. Yeah. That's where I used to First time I ever played there. Uh -huh. First time that, that hit that distortion pedal, bar. my whole pedal board went ka -chunk. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Cloud and yeah. Tropicana, right? What? Is that the one you're talking no, about? No, that dive bar. Oh, okay. oh, the same location. Same location. Yeah. Yeah. It, back when they had the angry Scotsman as the sound guy. Dude. Oh, John. Miss John. Miss John. Oh, but but miss the John, sound dude. is better, you gotta say. Really? <laughs> now that uh, they have a sound, from the audience perspective, I'm, I'm telling you, it sounds better from because they have somebody out front actually like listening and doing the sound. That being said. I'm gonna say I love John. It's and a, John always did us right. Yeah. Love John. I'm no, 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 yeah, I, I don't, don't disrespect John. No disrespect. <laughs> You're an integral part of my memories for Dive Bar. And do miss you. Um, moving on to you. Me? Uh-oh. Yeah. Couldn't find too much on you. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's my design. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that, yeah. Well, yeah, as far as me, I can't shut up, so there you go. <laughs> well... Shekelstein, or is it Shekelstein? Sheikenstein. Sheikenstein. That's an I. That's an I. Sheikenstein. Yeah, come on, man. You I only wrote, wrote it myself. Wrote Sorry, it's an I. Look, it's an I. Your bourbon glass over. Uh, <laughs> Whatever happened to the pirate boat? The pirate ship? Dude, uh, I have the story for you, man. I never told you this. The one. Oh, oh, oh Brent, Brent, this is. From back in the Bloody L days? I still yes. think it's in his garage, actually. Yeah. So yeah. it didn't get dismantled? <laughs> I no, so. no, I think it's still in his garage. He he does uh, live four doors down from me. Did it ever tread water? But, huh? Did it ever go on? Yeah, he took it on water. Okay, cool. He actually the first time he took it on water, the mast broke off <laughs> <laughs> when he was sailing, and he had to, like I don't even know how he saved it, but I remember him telling me that story. But uh, yeah, I still see it in his garage. But that that guy is always moving from one project to another, and his new project is like old fixing old cars. Right. So now his garage is closed, and he's got his old cars in front, and <clears> I just see him fixing those. I totally but as far that. as I know, the boat's still there. Right on. The pirate ship's still so there. So it's a paused project then. He's, he's what? Not no, I think I think he actually finished that it's one. Done. As far as it came to fruition, moved on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So think, what's your story about so, it? So I, I I had a little pooch. I used to take to the dog park on okay. the. Religiously, like me too. So you, you meet a lot of people at the, at the dog park, and there was this one lady in particular. Uh, she had actually dated, uh, I don't know his name, Clark. Clark, okay, yeah. the guy building the yeah. pirate ship, right? Yeah, and uh, I she found out in a roundabout way because we didn't know that we were yeah. kind of it's a small world type situation yeah. until it's I it's always a small world. I nice, told her though. about the band, yeah. so he obviously knew about you guys moving on with the Sheiks. Uh -huh. And just out of the dozens of times we would just bullshit at the dog park with the pooches and stuff, uh, I brought up the band a couple of times, and the name the name sticks to some people. Some people might forget, but <clears throat> for some people it sticks in their head. So. Um, 
I don't know how they, she found out or he found out, but she came back and told me this story about home dude was in a band who played accordion and bloody L and was building a pirate ship <laughs> and his fucking in his garage. Yeah. And I'm like, you're kidding me. So she, <laughs> this woman was dating yeah. th this dude Clark, with whom I've never met. Yeah. I have no idea. It was uh, a small one. It, 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 it was just kind of you're a like, weird oh, story. interesting. Yeah. I'm like, how like she thought that this guy was like the most eccentric dude. And I could not picture this lady. I didn't know her yeah. really very well, just from the dog park. She was kind of personable. Uh, I could not picture her dating a guy like that. Anyway, I, I <laughs> but it was this weird, it was a small world kind of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was very, very odd. Very odd. Anyway. Cool story, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was my, uh, that was my story. Uh, you once requested a half-naked Plutonian comic panel from your future comic creators. Why don't you like Neptonian bodies? Plutonians are smaller. Yeah, there's an answer. <laughs> I just honestly wanted to use all those words. And <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, you still have the hookah pele mug? Yeah, I still have it. Yep, still got it. I mean, that's the one tiki festival we played. Yeah, I still got my mug. I've always wanted to those show. Yeah, that was a cool dude. He he played that show dead. Um, yeah, you did. Yes, no, I was going to ask about that. And I was like, well, he wasn't really dead though. He man, pretty he, close. He sent us a picture. Half an hour before the show, and he was in a sink with like peas or something, frozen peas on his neck, Ron his hands. Actually, Ron actually saved my my shit. That yeah. yeah, and then he shows up, and I was like, I was calling him. I was like, dude, if you don't come, we're playing with one guitar. I don't care, man. Like you're gonna die. And uh, he showed up. He played his set, fucking better than I did. Uh, and as soon as we were done, I was like, go, go home. Like don't touch your uh, gear. Yeah. I was fine after it. that. Like after that. The, the hump, you're fine. I, I get these orbital migraines to where oh. you'll, you'll lose like your vision and shit and then the migraine comes on. So <clears throat> I learned a little trick from the tubes of you that you know you, you put your hands and feet in warm warm water, you put an uh, ice pack on, on okay. your neck. Okay, a little thermodynamics. It dra yeah, it draws the pressure away, the blood flow from your head, whatever. Ron gave me some, uh, I can't remember what the fuck this <clears throat> shit was, but I'm sure that helped too. So it kind of, it paused the traumatic, like, pain. Because after you get your vision back, it just becomes so unbearable. So I was so fortunate to be able to just play that. I was so fucking happy that it did <laughs> not, it did not fucking hinder us from, from, from playing that That was show. a good show, too. That was, was, that that was a lot of fun. Of fun. That was like, really I, cool. After I got there, I knew everything was fine. And I, man, I even had a couple of beers. I wasn't even. Yeah. I wasn't even mad. No, <laughs> it, it was a blast. <laughs> yeah, good show. Yeah, cool story, bro. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Always. <laughs> uh, one last question for you, sir. You've gone on record that this is not a work project, uh, but you've already given fifteen thousand dollars and an ankle to it, minus <laughs> minus free drinks for the rest of the band. Uh huh. Have you learned your lesson yet? Um. My lesson? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't. I don't regret. On tables and <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know. See, I don't regret a thing about it. If I go back and change it, I probably wouldn't. You right. know, I mean, I probably wouldn't have done that one thing at that one sure. time. Yes. But I mean, I have so much fun memories of doing what we did. Mm -hmm. it, it was it was a blast, and you know, to live your life just like. Afraid? Afraid, yeah, not doing anything. Like, that's not fun. I don't want to be on stage. So like, mm. you know, I mean, even yeah, since I've that, I've done some stuff that maybe I shouldn't have, you know? Yeah. Like, um, you know, my girlfriend maybe keeps me in line a little bit, which is good to have her doing that. But uh, I don't know. I mean, is it a lesson learned? Maybe not to do that specific thing at that specific <laughs> time. But, I mean, am I still going to act up? Yes. I mean, it, it's fun. I mean, that's that's life. That's part of it. You know, you got to have a little bit of danger in life, right? Absolutely. You know, that's my danger. I'm doing okay. Danger, <laughs> danger dick vein. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, do you recycle? Yeah. I care about this planet. Right over there. Here? No, the, there? the canister over there. Here, yeah. <laughs> now wave your hand over it like magic. Hey, hey! Shots look at that. This world is saved. But I see you're empty. I am also empty. I am. You're not empty. I don't know about you. Booze break. We're back. Uh, 
general question for the band. Alright, let me rephrase it. It's not for the band, it's for each of you, but... How long have you each been doing music? Um... Whew. 25 years now? I started really little. I was gonna say. And, yeah, I started... I started in my, in my little kid days. Um, I started playing piano a lot, and then I picked up the guitar. I didn't learn how to tune it for the first five years. Um, and then... And Brandon. I don't, I don't know. I just, yeah. And then Brandon told me how to play guitar. It's there a good go. thing that your guitar stays in tune. Like, uh -huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm still using the same guitar that I got Jesus for Christmas when I was Christ. 17 years old. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I, I mean, think that used to get rid of it. And that's that's crazy. That that guitar cards. is out. The guitar that's been on the, every Chic album yeah. is that yeah. one you've had since you were seventeen. Mm -hmm. That that Carlo Rebelli contributes so it much a, to the sound. Of Hundred and fifty dollar guitar. Yep, I love so, that. I spill beer all over it. I spit paint on it. Yep. Um, it gets thrown into the crowd. I have other people play it. Um, but yeah, I've, all I've had to do was like reseal the neck a couple times, and still sounds great. Still it sounds great. Definitely you know, you're not built on a Monday. No, that's okay. You don't know, have the same thing. I just patched up my ankle. I'm good to go. Yeah. You patch up your guitar. Good to go. Yeah, we'll do it again, up, dude. I mean, that thing is a no regrets. Yeah, <laughs> like my piece of shit will not stand here. Uh, <laughs> like two thousand dollars guitar. Uh, right. not even. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I mean, it's it's whatever. But yeah, it will not fucking stand. Now you've been in and out of bands for a long time. How long well, have you yeah, been doing yeah. music? When, yeah, um, how long? Well, I mean, like. Starting from like a young age, yeah, it's been it's been over uh, twenty years. But twenty years. Like, but but playing in bands and stuff. I first my first band was actually a lounge band in a casino playing drums, and it was fun and eventful, but also kind of depressing at times. Like <clears throat> to play to nobody. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I know that. I know that. And to play brown eyed girl while you're at it. <laughs> right. Uh. But. Uh, and I've been a part of some projects, um, playing bass and other stuff. This is actually the first band I've been affiliated with where I play guitar, which was like my main instrument. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah, you so you should have probably been doing that because you were really good at it. Well, I appreciate that, but it, it has everything to do with the writing. So I'm just a hired gun. Um, I enjoy this project. This is the, the funnest project I've ever been a part of. Yeah. What's funny is the reason he plays guitar is because we already had the other slots filled. We were, <laughs> we were at Drew's house. Yeah. We were showing him the that's, first that's album. True, yeah. And he goes, man, I want to be a chic. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, that's enough. What do you play? He goes, everything. I was like, you want to play guitar? That's All right. And then he came over the next day. <laughs> and that's it. Not how. And it worked out. <laughs> Not how. You sure? Yeah. I mean, that's the story I hear. A roundabout. Well, no, it was, it was like a regular Zang yeah. Barbecue, you know. I actually hadn't been to one in almost, almost over a year. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, it had been a while. Yeah. And we I, bonded over a, uh, hot rod trucks because we both have a hot rod truck. Well, see, you and I were the only, like, out of all the years of going to these barbecues, because it had been a couple years even before that, Brian and I had been the only, Oop. like, Brian was the only one that, Oop. Brain, I'm sorry, <laughs> Brain, yes. <laughs> Uh, we, we would bond over everything except music. Yeah. Which I found <laughs> Neither one of us talked about. It. I still don't. I still sites. don't tell people that I've Yeah, music. yeah. It's, I don't know. It's, it's we talk thing. about, you know, life and especially cars. Old yeah. cars because I drove an old truck. He, he owns what, a 70C10. 70 yeah. The 71. Uh, so we would always talk about just, just random shit like that and never about music. And I just found it so hilarious. Like two years into this acquaintance that I happened to show up to a Zang Burgers barbecue after a year of not being there, and you guys just finished this fucking record, the first one. Um, this is the the bar first barbecue I saw Dick at. Uh, as was well. I there? I don't yeah, think I yeah. was there. Yeah. No, no, no. You just weren't in the garage yeah, at the time. Yeah, because yeah. oh, yeah. okay. you know everybody, you know, you, yeah. you know, bond. I was drinking then. Yeah, I was drinking yeah, then. Yeah. <laughs> so we all go into the studio where the magic happens at Drew's respectfully, and. Uh, uh, I mean, everybody was proud of it. Like, you guys were hella stoked and it, really stoked I, to I'm show so it off. Of and I just happened to be there. And I felt like it was this kind of fate to some extent. And uh, I just remember, we were like two or three songs in. I, maybe, I think maybe it was Plutonium, it was Plutonium Bombs, Bombs that was playing. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I'm like, what was the name of your guys' band again? <laughs> and you were like, Cheeks and Neptune. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, I wish I was a Sheik. <laughs> and you were like, well, what do you play? I'm like, yep. well, you know, I kind of play this and that and the other, but I, I play guitar. He's like, well, we're kind of looking for a guitarist. And I think you guys were in between, uh, 
This, I can't remember the kid's name. Yeah. We were still, at that point, we were still trying to put stuff together. Yeah. Because it well, kind of fell in our lap, which was crazy. It yeah. kind of happened overnight. Because kind of, uh, Brian and I, we were in another band before, the one you talked about, uh, Bloody L. And when that kind of went its way, we decided we we're going to stick around and we're going to work together. That's when we came up with the idea of Sheiks, and which is us so that first the album. The band yeah. is, at its core, me, Dick, and Drew. And so we recorded that first album. With honestly, at that point in my mind, it was just record a good album. Yeah. That, that's where we're at. You yeah. know? Get, get that something that I never want to take out of my making it yeah. live. Or and then it after live, we recorded yeah. it, it's like, well, maybe we can find some people to play this live. I think Drew, that, kind Drew, of put a Drew gun threatened, threatened me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 This is yeah. still Drew from Allure, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. dude, he is more of a sheep than like the the, the other. Because it's funny when I did the interview with them of. With, with Allure, nothing at all was mentioned, and I didn't see oh, anything while I was researching yeah. Yeah. about him being yeah. in Sheiks. But yeah. he's a driving force. Yeah, he's he's a big part of it. Humongous part, yeah. yeah. See, he made it sound at Dive Bar like he was filling in that night and hoping maybe it would be a permanent thing. <laughs> uh, I don't think he's hoping anything. We're hoping it's a permanent thing. Fucking hey, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, why yeah. the hell not? He wouldn't he's have to work very hard at it. Yeah. I mean, he knows it better than we do. He's heard these songs yeah. ten times more than we have. Every but, nook and cranny, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, he's also a very busy guy, he's so, very busy. you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's yeah. when you're good. Yeah. That's the aspect that we, that we, we, we were thinking of. Yeah, because, I mean, I hang out at his house every single day. I'm probably going to go there right after this. Oh, so yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. And uh, it, basically, this band was, we were just hammered. That's how we got introduced to Swamis uh, from Pizza Port. And, uh, dude, on Galactic Gurus, he called me the next morning. And uh, he's, a, he's like, hey, man, you want to record those bongos? And I was like, I think I... I think we did those last night. We both checked our phone, and I had a video of him playing bongos. And he like checks his file. He's like, "Holy fuck, dude! There's bongos on this song." That's and uh, neither one of us remember recording bongos on yeah. that song. Uh, they awesome. sounded great. Fucking great. Yep. And yep. Uh, so every song was just. We would wake up the next morning to a surprise, um, and be like, "Hey, that song's done. Cool." Drunk recording. Um, yeah. I mean, there was a lot of parts that we had to take out because I did this not is play it to me. <laughs> I love these little anecdotes. Yeah, um, and uh, so yeah, he's been you. there since day one. It's been mm -hmm. just so that's why we never thought mm -hmm. that it was going to be a live band because it's like we're getting fucked up. We're going to record some dumbass music. We're going to have fun with it. I at my end goal is to have a CD that I never want to take out of my car. We all succeeded at that, and after that, we're like, well, let's see if we can maybe play a couple of live shows. Yeah. And it's interesting, like, because every album after that has probably been a different process recording, yeah. just because we've all, like, it's just different parts in our life. Mm -hmm. It's an but, evolution, yeah. But, you yeah. know, Drew's still the one recording us, like, that core is still there, and it still sounds like Sheik's, even though it's new and has almost a variation right. of it, it's yeah. still Sheik, and it it's has still the essence. fun, and it still it's has just... the, that, that hook, and I still love it, like, yeah. The, the, the something. Uh, yeah, I just, something. Uh, I don't know the quoi. word... But I got the hands gestures. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So how about you, Dick? How long have you been doing um, Let's see. I've been in and out of bands since my teens. and Music back then. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I think I'm old. Um, <laughs> and honestly, like, I... When I was a kid, I just wanted to be in a band. Like, I didn't want to necessarily be the singer or a vocalist or the drummer or the guitarist or the bass. I just wanted to be in a band. Right. So I tried everything, right? Those drums, I tried and tried, never got that good. You got some chops, man. Yeah, and then again, not that good. Man. Tried that guitar, played an hour every day, never got that good. I, I did a little basic, but never got that good. Bass, right. the same thing. Like, I could never play as good as I was hearing it in my head. Yeah. But right. vocals, I still can't hit a note, but I can act up and I can talk real good and <laughs> scream real good and act up real good. And I'm like... That, that that was kind of my niche, you know. Once Absolutely. I started doing that, it was like, oh, that, yes. that's where yes. that's where I fit. You know there what you I mean? Go. You you find your niche. That's right. And that's 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 where I fit. So acting up. I, to <laughs> I totally agree. And um, Absolutely. and I've been having fun with it, you know. And it's it's mm -hmm. it's yeah. That's why I ended up. I'm not like Brando here who can play everything. I wish I could play everything. I can't. I, I but, I'm uh, mediocre, but I can kind of dabble, right? Yeah. But I, I, always, I always describe Dick, you know, like. Our front man, he's not like a real big dude, but when he's on stage, this motherfucker's like 12 feet tall. Like, I did notice that him. on stage, your you head was somehow him, above everybody else. <laughs> <'cause> everybody <laughs> else's, and yeah. you were somehow up here. But uh, It's amazing. Right on. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, moving on. That's just that I was on two, uh, two stack. <laughs> <laughs> two bar <laughs> stools. Two bar stools. The only time you were 12 feet tall was <laughs> when you fucking broke, broke your, your ankle, ankle, you yeah. said? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, um, from... That. I want to talk about your musical influences. What was your first 
like earliest musical influence that made you say, I want to, I want to do that. I want to try that or, or whether it's an album or a song or a genre or an artist. Well, when I first got into guitar, a little bit after I started playing guitar, I was huge into corn. I think I'm still a corn fan to this day. Uh, my very first concert was corn. I saw them I at Thomas too. and Mac with no one, which was amazing. Wait. Papa Roach's. Oh, I mean the band was called no one. But band Sorry. was called no one. <laughs> Uh, Papa Roach was second. Power Man 5000, who I still fucking love to this day. Oh, um, solid, Power solid Man 5000, man. the Mega Kung Fu Radio album, is still one of my biggest influences. <laughs> not so much... Um, now I get it. Not so much now the... Uh, so yeah, much. It's yeah, it's funny because I, I don't say no, that a lot real. because people are like, oh, obviously Power Man 5000. But I no, it. I like that no, weird Power funky man shit. Was dope. Um, when Worlds shit. Collide, uh, it was really good, really well processed. Um, but no, I like that weird funky weird shit, which has influenced me all the way through um and then corn closed the night and that's when i i was 12 at that concert it's my very first concert that i remember um so i think corn was huge on me i mean all the new metal that's what was coming up when i was a kid yeah. so yeah. i think i was just subject to that um would i say it's my driving influence no but i don't know if i had any control over that so that was just who i was listening to at the totally. time yeah i don't know corn limp biscuit shit like that deftones None of that translates to what we're doing, but that's <laughs> my yeah, first. My I first mean, electric guitar was a seven-string Ibanez. It looked just me. like fucking Brian Welch's guitar. I guess I can see that, but it kind of does in, in a way. I love it in a way. I love oh, it, it yeah, kind of. I mean, does. your influences will sneak into your music. Yeah, I can you can't do anything about it. Yeah, not totally. But I remember. Then, I, I grew. I grew up listening to. Kenny Rogers and Crystal Gale. Yeah. And, see, that's a lot. A lot of my influence right. too. Yeah, I, I grew up listening to country and western. Yeah, and. Same and here. I, later, years later, when I'm like writing music, mm -hmm. I'm listening like, yeah, it's twangy as fuck, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I was so yeah. proud. I'm, like, I'm writing rock and yeah. roll. When I was like, a, when I was a kid, dude, it was that that country that was just coming out. You know, yeah. Uh, My first song I ever wrote, sorry, first song I ever wrote was called "I'm Lonely." I mean, <laughs> you can't get more country than Hell that. Yeah. Well, yeah. besides, I'm so lonesome I could die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was I was big into Dolly Parton when I was a kid. Hey, Still is. am. Dolly I mean, Parton I, on the national on the blue album. Oh, we absolutely. have a Dolly Parton cover. Nine instruments and two hour show. Uh, Come on, is beautiful. And yeah, every kind not of to way. mention all the money she's given to uh, exactly help out. very charitable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Just, that's right. Dolly Parton cover on the second album. On the first album, there's a song that has heavy allusions uh, to Marty yes. Robbins. Uh -huh. So yeah. yeah, I mean we yeah, yeah that's in there too. We covered. We, I talk about we. You guys <laughs> cover Dolly Parton. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. New boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always forget about that sometimes. How about, about you? Early um, school points? Let's see. So early, early stuff. Like, I remember like one of the first bands that I absolutely loved was like early, like 80s Maiden, like Iron Maiden. Their stuff from the 80s. I just loved that. But pretty early I went into straight just punk stuff. I love the SoCal punk sound as a kid. Like all the stuff from there. I okay, so like, not the UK punk. Not as much the UK so punk, the but like, punk. but like the adolescence yeah. and, and DI rancid, and, and TSOL. Yeah. Not so much rancid, like the Bay Area stuff. I wasn't as much into more of the SoCal stuff. But I mean, that's kind of where I grew up in, you know. So yeah. that that that's really the stuff that that you know I was kind of into, and it was kind of that what early '90s is when I was kind of getting into that stuff, mm -hmm. and that's kind of when that second wave of punk really hit, you know. And then you got all the Green Days and stuff, like it was making it big. So kind of. In that area, I was into that 80s stuff. But then, you know, from there, I was really into, you know, metal and then branching out into some of the old Western stuff and the rockabilly stuff. You've been all over you the just, place. You just, start, you just start branching. And I find that I'm more into, like, artists than specific genres. Yes. You know, that that's really, like... Yep. Like, so if you look I'm at my music me. collection, it's not like you're going to find a huge country Western section. But I got a... Marty Robbins' his Western stuff, I got it all. You mm -hmm. know? Like you're not gonna find a huge goth section in in my thing, but like Peter Murphy, his solo work, I have it all. So I'm more like I find there's certain artists that resonate with me, and I like get all their stuff, and that's kind of what's on my, my my playlist. Nice. I'm actually excited about. Uh, I've got a stack of records up in room six, and a record player, and I finally have a, a mixer that I can plug the record player into, so I can finally listen to all those records and just sit and I'm once a week I'm gonna try and just have a a total just absorption, you know, just, tonight I'm, I'm putting on albums, mm -hmm. just going to work my way down the pile so I can start broadening myself because yeah. I'm 49. I got certain hard things set in my brain yeah. Yeah. And, and certain ways of writing music and I, I you know, I want to I change that and mm -hmm. it's scary. 
You know but, what? You know what I find mm-hmm. hard. What is like finding new bands and new music that I like. Yeah, because it's that, all it's done. It's really right? hard. I absolutely like, agree with like, that. Like, like I'm constantly like searching right. for like a mm-hmm. new band, right. a new sound, something like. This is I'm looking for that, right? Well, what, what is it? And a lot of it's like I feel like I've heard that before. Yeah, it's all been done. It's yeah. okay. All music is thievery. Like, like, <laughs> it, which That's is fine, right? Which, which is fine, you know. I mean, what's what's originality? Taking bits and pieces and putting it together in a new yeah. way. Got it. I'm fine yeah. with that. But like, nothing excites me. Every now and then, you hear that one thing where you're like, ah, oh, that's it, and you get excited. But the older I get, it's 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 further and further and further I, apart. I feel, and I think ah, it's I just because way, we, you you know more of it, so it's less of it's new. Yeah. Right. You know what does it for me? What, we're talking about excitement. That moment where there's a break right before the wave's gonna crash again. And I, so I, I named my indie rock band The Suspense because of that moment. Mm. It's just like. <clears throat> I love that moment. Corn does that really good. Mm-hmm. A- anytime there's a dynamics change. So I'm huge on that. I'm a big mm-hmm. fan. Because, you know, even though, yes, all music is theory and it's all been yeah. done before, and we're all using the same eight notes, uh-huh. it's, you know, somehow. It's funny, I was, I was just talking about that maybe two days ago with my girlfriend. She. She's in two bands as well. Oh, really? Yeah, she's like, shut up, shut up. Yeah. She's, uh, she's in Ghostwood shit. Murder and she's in the Tiki Bandits. Um, nice. Very, very talented. Yeah, she's very talented. Um, but we were just discussing that and she's like, I saw it on stage when you guys just stopped. And she's like, that's how I knew how tight you guys were. I was like, cool. That was, oh, like, that was a huge I, yes. compliment. Huge compliment. I was like, it's so much harder to not play notes. Uh, <laughs> it's so much harder. Yeah. And like without the, the drummer actually going like, one, two, yeah. three, five, uh-huh. six, seven, eight. When you all just know. Uh-huh. Here we go. Yeah. Boom. I love that. I love that. Uh, how about you? Earliest musical influence? Uh, early on was uh, metal. You know, I loved Metallica when I was a little kid. My, my first concert was Metallica and Korn Hell yeah. at the Thomas and Mack Center. Fucking Jonathan Davis came out with his sparkly green pants playing the bagpipes and shit. And I, I, I thought it was fucking cool. I wasn't even there to see Korn. And I thought that that was... <laughs> Awesome. They opened for Metallica, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. We were like way, way, way. We, we were literally the last seats at the, Tom, uh, at the Thomas Mack Center. And Metallica played. I was always a big metalhead, but not soon after I got into punk. And that, that's when it <laughs> changed, it kind of changed my life. Yeah. <laughs> because there's so, like, just like metal, there's 30 different genres of metal. Yeah, and there may not be as many in punk, but there's definitely different genres of punk. So yeah. I, I tried to venture off into the old, the older stuff with Bad Brains and and Dead Kennedys, uh, but I I identified more with the skate punk scene, No Effects, Pennywise, and all that stuff. I really love the just the fact I was always mesmerized how. Eric Sandin could play those kinds of beats with one kick pedal. At that no point, you were, at that point, you were drumming, right? No, no, I was playing guitar, but it was just I'd never heard anything faster than No Effects. Hmm. And then when I heard that he only played with one kick pedal, it blew my mind even more. Probably did the double shuffle. Yeah, it's just the, the, the whatever pattern this this crazy yeah. wizard used, I was always from uh, like uh, uh, mesmerized by. The punk scene and just the how diverse it was, and you don't have to be talented to but play punk <laughs> and have fun. So that's <laughs> where my mindset was, and then yeah. I found myself playing drums for a punk band, and I'm like, anything is possible. You know, you kind of get in where you fit in, right? And I, it was just a wonderful kind of experience after that, like getting involved in music and stuff like that. So punk was probably a bigger influence on me, especially later on in life. I actually got into a new metal band where we had a female vocalist where I was playing bass. That was a lot of fun too, but my heart, my heart was always with... I wish I had a fizz. With, <laughs> yeah! I mean, I, to be honest, like this... Not uh, enough like I said, like what I said earlier, this is the funnest project I've ever been, and, and that go that does not take away from any other project I've been a part of because I'm still very much, I still associate with the people even in that that lounge band that I was in in, in the casino. Mm-hmm. I work with this dude every day, and it was just kind of a small world thing. Yeah, he yeah. works security. I work at this facility where he works at security at, and he just happened to be there. I still see this dude. My one of my good good friends, Jimmy, 
uh, Jimmy Andrews, he plays guitar for the new metal band that I was in playing bass with the female vocalist, uh, uh, PJ. Uh, we're very still much involved with each other. So I think it's still just a blessing to be involved personally with these people to, in some aspect. And they still have somewhat of an influence on me. So uh, I, I would say that it's pretty broad. I listen to old time music. I love old country. I love old soul and R&B. And I think, like, I don't write shit. So when I try to play stuff, that maybe those influence still influences still kind of... I try to to uh, uh, build on that a little bit. You know what I mean? Right on. It's very it's very di- it's very difficult to write. I can't write <laughs> shit, guys. That's why I love you. Because <laughs> I've always been Thanks good at playing me. other people's stuff. Always been good at playing other people's yeah. stuff. I've never been creative. Write so. those coattails. Oh, writing, it, writing is like not easy. Like, you know, like, it's writing a hired is, gun. That's right. And, and I appreciate you guys and and let me. Um, um, be creative with you guys, you know, uh, uh, help you, I don't know the fucking word, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, speak, I, oh, I, I think that's the hardest part of Sheik's is for me is the writing, like the lyrics when I, when I do that, that's, that's the hardest, I don't know how you feel about it, but like, for no, me, like, yeah, you writing lyrics isn't hard for me at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like for me, like, like, cause I have those ideas and I love those stories, but then to, to take that and then to format it into something that's going to have a decent rhythm and to still tell the story and within the confines of a certain structure that we have. That's tough. Yeah, you know? yeah. he doesn't get to decide on the structure. He, he gets the song when it's done. <laughs> Sometimes. It, yeah. it depends. Sometimes. It, it's actually, you know, earlier on the albums, it was kind of more yeah. loose. Now it's more like... <laughs> I'm at Drew's all the time, and we're yeah, like, ah, it's done now. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I can work with that. Yeah. Boom, 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 Here's boom. your lyrics. Right. Learn it, love it, live it. <laughs> So, nice. Um, right, yeah. Talking about the most funnest, I want to talk about show memories. What's your favorite show memory from being in this band? There's too many. That w- w- it could be like really bad, where someone went to jail, or it could be you know, like I have one playing New Year's Eve at Mr. D's biker bar, playing covers, and suddenly, guy with a mop runs across the dance floor to the bathroom. Turns out the guy got stabbed. Oh shit! Yeah. yeah. Just kept playing. And instead of helping the guy out, he's just mopping up the blood. Well, and he survived. Out, he survived. Out. But it was still... <laughs> Dude, move. But we found that out. We found that out at the break. Same, same bar. You're making a mess. <laughs> Get the fuck out of the way. Same bar, same night. Some sweet young thing walks in the door, hammered already. From the neck up, 50 miles of bad road. From the neck down, she's had work done. Like, she's probably a stripper somewhere. And during the course of us playing, I don't know, Mustang Sally or something... Because uh, it was that kind of band. She proceeds to completely disrobe. <laughs> and every, the dance floor clears because every guy is there with a girl. And every girl is like, mm-hmm. And it got really uncomfortable. And we finished. And she put on her clothes. And she stumbled out. Like, she's not driving. Is she? <laughs> <laughs> so those like those are my... They're kind of my favorites because I'm like, ah, that's why I don't play those bars anymore. Uh-huh. <laughs> but um, then I'll, I have some other cool... Like, check that off my rock star yeah. dream right. wish list. Right. There's so, a lot of shows I don't remember. Um, so and the there. memories are fuzzy. Yeah. Uh, but man, I think the series of events from Jake breaking his ankle uh, <laughs> was a fun series of events. It wasn't your favorite show. <laughs> yeah. So God, the way he broke his ankle, I was already climbing up on these bar stools. Oh jeez. Um, wait, it wasn't well, just him. We, no, it was a two show event. Like, yeah, we played, yeah, we played the night and before, Sunday, and then yeah. we're playing a Sunday, and we're just entertaining yeah. ourselves because yeah. now you're at Sunday at Bullhead City. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're climbing all over shit. Um, having a good time having a great time oh, Lazy Harry's is one of our favorite yeah. places to play so he's able to hold those bar stools under me I get down he's climbing up I'm like I gotta play guitar now <laughs> see ya and then so he's up, he's hanging on to the, the beam of the bar and I just see we have it on video we have a really good angle of him falling does that mean I can blame you yeah you can blame me it's my fault <laughs> I'm thinking this yeah, yeah. and so, oh, so he falls. falls yeah he falls he breaks his ankle and we wrap up the night. Uh, <laughs> and then on the way home that night, my transmission goes out. I'm, I'm on the freeway. I'm a mile away from, from uh, Laughlin. And I walk from my car, all the gear in my car, uh, lock the doors, hopefully, 
uh, walked all the way back to Ly- to to Laughlin. It is Memorial Day weekend, Sunday into Monday Memorial so Day. So you cannot find so a my, hotel room. So my my hotel room was two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. Damn. And, uh, so I wake up that next morning. Yeah. I go downstairs, just still hammered. Um, I wasn't driving. I, was, <coughs> I got drunk at the hotel. Um, <laughs> uh, so I go downstairs. I and this is not a broke my ankle. This is the night you broke your ankle. Yeah. Oh, shit. And I so was that, like, I was like on my couch yeah. in pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. I go downstairs. I, I go to the bar, have another beer. I put twenty bucks in the machine. Second hand, hit a royal, thousand bucks. <laughs> and, uh, so that was great. Paid for my hotel room. Paid for the tow back to Vegas. Paid for all that shit. Anyway, after that, we had shows lined up to where we were headlining, whatever that means in Vegas. And uh, we were like, and we were like, <laughs> uh, we we don't. Well, it was like one show. Like we were the only band. And like we were like doing a favor for this other venue, so we're like, well, we don't want to cancel these shows. So we just had our friends come and sing these songs. And I, was like, I think that was like my idea. Shows, like, right? I remember, like, idea. I was yeah. like, I was yeah. like, yeah. guys, like, sheets are more yeah. than just me. Like, I even said, brain, what do you think about just having our friends fill in on songs? It was until great. We my had nine singers. Until line. my ankle gets better, right? So yeah. that way, like, we only had a few shows. So you had a singer yeah. showcase, basically. Yeah. It was it was Sheik's yeah. karaoke. <laughs> and uh, and those those shows were amazing, and uh, we had a lot. The of fun. best shows were without me. It was yeah, great. yeah, it was. Turns yeah. out we didn't need it. <laughs> no, they they were great though. I mean, I I honestly feel like those shows went our, over without a hitch. Yeah, you know? and uh, our first show back without him, so everybody knew what happened. Yeah, and uh, and they knew he wasn't going to be there, and we had all these singers coming in, and uh, still. A lot of people showed up to see us, which was great because it was just the five of us mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, plus nine singers. And so the very <laughs> first show, we're at this place and we grab all these chairs and all of us in the band are playing yeah. on chairs the yeah. entire night. And people oh. screaming at us, get the fuck down. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, captain, my captain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're all trying to hurt ourselves and hurt each other. And But I but, mean, I mean, what are you gonna, like, what am I going to do? I fell down and broke my ankle, two surgeries out for the summer, whatever, you know, it took me a while to get back going. But I mean... What am I gonna do? Like, yeah, oh, I'm gonna stop doing what I love doing. Yeah. No, is the band gonna stop having fun because of that? No, enjoy life, revel in it. Like, yeah, we you have fun we made with it. The whole part of the show, when he came back, he had a fake dead foot on his yeah, neck. Like, I mean, laid in a cast, and <laughs> you, yeah, you gotta just Dave Grohl go. guitar throne. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> You know, up. like that's so like uh, that that set up like some really fond memories for us. Mm-hmm. And it right. was a good time. Uh, it showed us that we had nine friends, which is insane. There you go. <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, we we honestly did it because we had the, those shows already lined up. But I mean, it it, it would have been nice to maybe book some more shows without Dick. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh my. Okay. I'm joking. I'm joking. We still can. <laughs> I'll just step back here and you go. Right. Have at it. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, I don't know. For me, what I, mean, I all the shows kind of like blend together for me. It's not like I don't think I've had like one pinnacle moment at a show. All of our shows are pretty amazing. Um, you sure it wasn't it the dive bar where you met me? That was the best show I think we've ever had. It, it, met me. it was yeah. a pretty good show, but. I don't know, like, that night when I'm having the show, I feel like it's the best. Mm-hmm. But the time we played before that, I felt it was the Like, every time I get off stage, last, I feel like it, yeah, that's yeah. the best. So, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a little jaded every time I get off the stage just because it was so, like, ah, yeah. that's running through my veins. Um, I guess probably, like, the the bands that we play with is probably what kind of what sticks sure, out the most, you know? Absolutely. So, yeah. like, like, being able to play with some bands that I've listened to since I was a kid... You know, to me, that's an honor yeah, to be, be on the same, be able to play the, the same Kennedy's, stage that like yeah. bands say, that I totally yeah. admire and have played that stage. That I'm like, Kennedy wow, show was very, like very cool. Special. You know, and then being able to play with our friends, like yeah. like to me, that was always like fun. Those stand out. Yeah, well, I the guess, whole backstage is just the people we hang out with at barbecues. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. you know, so okay. I guess yeah. it's more than than the what we're doing on stage isn't as memorable to me because we do that day in day out. It almost becomes regular. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, in the moment, it yeah. feels great, and I'm off stage. I'm like, that's the best. But in hindsight, it's become just routine. That kind of sounds you know weird, what? but it kind of feels like that. I and what I remember hindsight. most is my friends and like the, thing, the yeah. bands that we were open with, where I'm like, whoa, that's so rad. Like, I've listened to these guys since I was even shorter than I am now. And, you know, <laughs> we're, like, you get to all play with them now. Like, I don't know. To me, that makes it feels really good. Like, you know, I almost feel like I've done something. I feel like you're right. It is hindsight. Uh, my most. Memorable shows were out of town. 
uh, playing yeah. at the uh, Out of Park Pizza. It's weird. As soon as you step out of town, man, you're rock stars. It's amazing. And I know. And well, I, admit, I wish I'd gone on tour I, yeah. when I was To be recording. honest, I've had the exact opposite experience in like, uh, like a previous band that I was in. Mm -hmm. Like if you're out of town band, you play like right before last call. Yeah. They, yeah, they put you right, right yeah. at the end of everything. I mean, coming from Vegas to... Yeah, yeah. Um... But when, when, when we played with like Dick Neptune and, and uh, Undercover Monsters, mm -hmm. those were like my most memorable. I loved playing yeah, with those guys. Yeah, we met a lot guys. of lifelong friends playing those shows. Yeah. Straight up. I loved playing with those guys. You know what I remember most about that one show we played? Adam, oh, I can't remember the name of it. It was with uh, Radioactive Chicken Heads. Slide Bar. Slide, slide Bar. Yeah. We played Slide Bar. Yeah. We were playing was with it, Undercover Monsters. It was right? in Riverside, okay. I believe? Yeah, uh, yeah. Fullerton. So, Fullerton? Yeah, yeah. It was One of those. Anyway, so we were playing there, and I remember before we were getting ready, the security guard was kind of giving me like a little bit of trouble. Like I had my nerve really? flask. He's like, "What's in that? What's in that?" I'm like, "Oh, it's, it's cool, you know." I'm just gonna set up. And he's like, "No, no." no. And I'm like, "All right, dude, it's cool. Just, just let me know. But you need to move that over so people get through." I'm like, "Okay, we can move stuff over." Giant flask. And I was like, I was like oh, "Okay." And then we got up there and played, of right? And, this thing. and then we got off stage, and he came up to me. He's like. Dude, you guys are really good. I'm sorry about that. I need to get a CD. Really? Like, yeah, and I was just no like, no shit. My job yeah, is done. Cool. My job Respect. is done, yes. right? What the fuck? Yeah, I was just like, okay, dude. Wow, okay. That was awesome. I, I yeah. have the exact opposite every single time. We're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, I, they're always I, yelling at people. I, I remember doing my research for this interview. Uh, came across an interview where someone was writing. I don't remember who was on the bill. You guys were like the third band, I think. And but uh, it was a fairly, if I remember, it was a fairly bigger name. Like I recognize the name of the headliner, mm -hmm. yeah. and it, and the, the whoever wrote the interview was like, you know, all the bands pretty much sounded kind of the same except this third act, Sheiks of Neptune. <laughs> I just went on to say how crazy you were. What show that was? Talked about ride, a rideable little toy spaceship. Yeah, yeah. Like, saw that, saw that. Yes, and I start. That's we're on our third one. Yeah. yeah. All right, on. Um, so moving on from show memories, did we get everybody? I think so. I think so. Cool. Yeah, I think we, yeah. we beat that. They're a little foggy, but yeah, they're there. <laughs> so always foggy. Yeah. yeah so yeah, end of the day, our friends. That's the, that's the best part of our shows. Cool. Uh, from okay. from show memories, I'm gonna talk about favorite venue in Vegas. It, it doesn't have to be one you played at. Just what's your favorite music venue in Vegas? For me, I gotta say House of Blues, even though you know. How they handle everything. For like obvious there. reasons, yeah, yeah. I, I but understand it was that. the first time I'd ever had a sound guy there and a sound guy there. Yeah, that's like yeah. I could hear nice. everything. Yeah. yeah, And for that one set, I just felt like a rock star. Yeah, House of Blues is a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. Like it's a little bit of a hassle getting yeah. in there. I mean, and come on, man, Lloyd Bay, get the water bottles. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, this is a hard one. Yeah, I Dude, mean, Dive Bar has been so good to us, and John. Has been a big part of that. Yep. Old, old fucky John. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't care who you were. Yeah. Um, we do. I we love, do it. We I do enjoy Evil, Evil Pie. Pie. We do enjoy. Oh, Evil Pie. Pie. I, uh, I yeah. They they let me. I don't know if they let me, but um. They don't. They don't. They, they don't. Let you. They, they don't. Was up. They don't they yell tolerate. at me after after the show. They I, I climb up on the roof and shit. And yeah. yeah. I definitely almost broke my back one time there, but Evil Pie is great. Learn, learn from the greats. Uh -huh. Learn yeah. from the greats. I gotta break something bigger from than my greats. ankles. <laughs> I, um, I wish Evil Pie had live music still, but like, like, not yet. Each venue, I mean, like, I mean, Triple B's was fun. Play. Yeah, tri Triple B's, Fremont. Fremont. Um, even the fucking venue that closed down not soon after we played it with uh, DK. It was oh yeah, the, the second it was floor. a brass lounge. LBC, yes. in the Las Vegas country. Las Vegas yeah, country thank saloon. you. Yeah, it's one of the country Vegas. That was the Fremont. That was the interview I read. It was about that show. Yeah, Dead Kennedy. No shit. Yes, yeah, really. and it was like, yeah, that's right. Las Vegas has a country saloon, and I was like, it no. At, <laughs> at the time you're seeing them, you guys play there. It's not a country saloon yeah. anymore. No, no, they're no, doing whatever no, they, of course whatever. Not. Yeah, that was a fun place. But no, that was a great venue, and that was a that was a great turnout. Yeah. It was a great venue, unless there was nobody there. And then it's a giant hall of emptiness. Yeah. And, and I right. literally standing right next to the sound guy saying, can you do anything about the reverb? He's like, that's just the way it is, buddy. <laughs> yeah. um, I remember. Giant <laughs> windows. Yeah. No, I remember. Not just, doing you any favors. Terrible. For real, you, you could just turn the reverb off. But the, the best part is... natural reverb. The best part is standing in line to get on the escalator to, go to, up. to get mm. in the place. Yeah. Where you're like, I can just go to Brass Lounge. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, I, honestly, my only experience with that venue is playing it. So I've never had to go up through the whole ropes of 
checking in. I saw some like we amateur were... wrestling there. I was, I, I've, <laughs> no shit. I've seen, I've seen shows I've there. Seen really? Shows. I, I know it's been a oh, thing. They had the, but I've they had never the been mechanical bull, right? Never been I don't there. know if I saw that one. Yeah, yeah they had a mechanical bull oh, at some really? point. They were yeah. trying anything to stay yeah. open. Yeah. yeah, that's a tough spot. They had hip hop shows. They had yeah. everything. I'm trying to think. I saw like a sideshow there once. I've seen some metal shows there. I've seen some punk shows. I saw the wrestling show with you. We went once. Never been to that venue, dude. Yeah. I, well, I, I played now there. You never dude. will. I, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I played there in college. <laughs> the the right. stage used to be in the middle of the room, but now it's like it was pushed back towards the end, which made Loden very nice because they actually had like a backstage. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't terrible. Yeah, when what, I was in yeah. college, the stage was way up. Whenever I went there, I would I would go in through that door. Uh, and just, I would find somebody I knew, and that's actually how I that's, talk my that way was in. actually a really fond memory. Was hanging out with Dead Kennedys by the elevators. Okay, was, yeah. I want I wanted to mention that. Uh, uh, Allegro, I, I seen that he was just on his phone smoking a cigarette, and I had my old fucking DK shirt on. I'm like, <laughs> you wore the shirt to... of the band over there to see. Uh-huh. Yes, <laughs> I'm like, I have to. Like, it, he's just there's nobody. There's literally less people here now <laughs> than there was in that fucking that the the area. So I I was like, dude, thank you. <laughs> you were a huge inspiration to all of us, and it's just uh, kind of an honor to to. Like see you they were the nicest guys yeah. atmosphere and he was totally chill he's like yeah that's fucking awesome he's like what he didn't even know if I was a fan or with a band but he asked like what band are you with and I'm like Sheik's of Neptune or you know going on I think we're first I can't remember <laughs> I think you guys were third yeah, yeah. we were something we were like later, that yeah. we were right before a 6 or 7 G yep do you remember that? That's all I remember. I've got a script over there waiting for them. They, they have to reschedule the, it. They're supposed the to come on the seven, show. I literally played, like the old punk band that I was in, uh, Sc- uh, Screaming for Change, we played our first show together ever. So it was literally Aaron and, and Dennis. It was just a two-piece back then. Dennis is, is the wonderful gentleman that tried out for us as well, but he also returned Ron's throne for yeah. us after that DK show. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Dennis is a solid dude. He'll always be family in my heart just from playing our first show together as ba- as a band like that. That was it was a beautiful thing. Yeah. So Sector 7G uh, will always have a soft spot in my heart. <laughs> they really really will. Really. Absolutely. Yeah, Dennis is a monster on the kit. I um, I met them. I got to meet him. He's a wonderful dude. Yeah. I I got to meet him at when I uh, went to the Sciatics release show at Double Down, and uh, Sector Seven G was playing, and we were talking about you know coming on the show, and then I saw him playing. I'm like, damn. Yeah, he's right. He's no slouch. Yeah, no, that dude has always been a solid fucking guy. He really has. Yeah, come on the show. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Well, what are you guys waiting for? Seriously. Oh, life. You know, everybody's too busy. Yeah, I, too I was cool for to, school, as they say. <laughs> yeah, well, not. I'm not calling you out or anything, Sector Seven G. Let's just let's. Neither am I. I'm I am. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> you are <laughs> Jud- <laughs> judging. <laughs> judging. All right. Um, Fuckers. So, did we get everybody? Yeah, I think so. Cool, cool, cool. So, from favorite venue, I want to talk about gear. Oh, next. Well, we don't have a drummer here, so it won't take an hour. Completely inept. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. We play on. All I want to know is, what are you currently rocking when you hit the stage? Oh, okay. I play. I play my my guitar from when I was seventeen, and I play my amp from it's when I was in Carlo college. Rebelli, yeah, can you, can you maybe, maybe get a little more granular? Hollow yeah. body with a Bisbee, a Bigsby. <laughs> let's okay. Trim low. Let's back up. Let's pretend new, new musicians, and you. They say, "How do I sound like you? What what do I get, what do I need to sound like you?" First, break it and fix it. There you go. Um, yeah, no shit. I, yeah I'm, I'm on the same. I'm on the same uh, line six solid state fucking yep. spider. Uh, They're head. Solid, if yeah. it's not broke, don't break it. Fucking <laughs> fix it. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's been broken so many times. Uh, and I've had people come up and tell me like, "I can't believe you're playing a line six. I, I know that's like the big joke in the guitar world. I'm no, like, no, right? I'm like. Yeah, yeah, but the line six is on stage, so Dude, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, <laughs> um, it, it, so I'm it still... drowns out my tubes. That's all I have. Yeah. I, I don't hear many people complain about line sixes. Yeah, yeah that it's... being said, I don't hear a lot of people say they're playing through line sixes. Exactly. I, 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 I don't up to it. I mean, I painted it and took all the line six shit off of it, but <laughs> um, 
Uh, yeah, no, like, I like love three it. Three times. <laughs> yeah, three times. It's pretty. It's pretty thick paint. Make yeah, so I got I got my Carlo Robelli, which was a Mars Music brand guitar when I was 17 years old. I liked it because of Chuck Berry. It looked just like Chuck Berry's yep. guitar. It was a red hollow body, had the F holes in it, had a gold Bigsby on it. And I was like, that's what I want. I don't care what it sounds like. Um, I have put a Seymour Duncan bridge pickup in it, so it's a little more metal. Um, <laughs> other than that, it's it fucking. Stood the test of time. I'm okay. just waiting for it to break and Dude, then buy another one. You know what? Yeah. God forbid. Yeah. And uh, we got two little, <laughs> two little 212 cabs that we're playing out of. Uh, they, they're just matched cabs. Um, I bought them from Germany. Uh, Those Octavio cabinets. from Undercover Monster recommended them to us because yeah. they were small. Oh, that's right. What brand are they? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is that they have vintage 30 speakers in them and, and they're, they're built like a fucking madhouse. And they're fucking tanks. Yeah. Nice. And, and we can just throw them on the ground. Half the size it's of so what much we're better using. than the old fucking half stack. Yeah, straight up, so much better. Straight yeah. up, it's half the size of what we we're using with the optimal impact. Yeah, that, that we're looking for. So, and he's got a PV fifty six fifty or whatever. It's a, a fifty one. Yeah, whatever number it is. Fucking goddamn, yeah. I can't remember. We, see, we, we don't <laughs> pay attention, out, so you dude. don't get down to like I use these strings. No, no, this thing was a gift, and, man. Like, yeah, I, 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 I think what it comes down to it's it's for for new musicians. Yeah. It's more important Find what you, you do. Like. More important what you do with it than what it is. As long as you're not right. buying bottom line crap, right? It really doesn't matter which brand you're getting. Well, buy bottom it's line crap more. and then put a Seymour Duncan pickup in it. It'll sound there you go. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, yeah. But it's more a matter of what Straight you up. do with it and and how you set it up than hmm. depending. Oh well, I spent this much money on this brand. Oh, well, I spent this much. I on can't this brand. hear a difference between my, my amp is this big right? and my amp is this, well this much bigger. Mm. Well, this is really. I'm giving Deerheads the opportunity to talk, but I'm also learning a little bit because <laughs> up in room six, I have six guitars, uh -huh. well, one bass, and then five other guitars, and none of them are over two hundred dollars from a yeah. pawn shop. No, I have a I have you a seven hundred dollar structure that I'll never touch a day in my life. I fucking hate it. I hate yeah. it. Like it for, sounds like garbage. Yeah, uh, and it's probably the way I play it. You bought no it because it was like pretty. Um, no, that was a gift. Mm. Yeah, I didn't pay seven hundred dollars. Just the, <laughs> the tone that you have with that Robelli is just uh, well, it's it's broken. It, it's broken. It, it adds. Yeah. It's, it's warm. And, I yeah. have to agree, right? It, it just adds mm -hmm. to the just the the room that you feel when you hear the, the those tones mm -hmm. that that comes through in the record. Uh, the the I I play a Epiphone LP that was actually gifted to me mm -hmm. and was. Uh, set up by a cousin who was like by marriage, and he would probably. Where, where's the story going? <laughs> he would probably disown me if I told if I if he knew what I did to this thing because he had it set up. It's for blues. Spill the tea. He had like he had like like a gauge eight strings. Oh yeah, on you this can't thing. feel them. If I'm not oh, bleeding, just, I can't. Uh, it's all blues. It's all tone. Yeah, my my strings are fifty six tens. I I, I used to put so seven string straight up. You know you don't strings. play metal, right? I know, but <laughs> well, if I'm not we, bleeding, I can't. Well, we have metal tone. We tuned to drop C. So yeah. is that what that is? Yeah. Yeah, straight up. I it something was bugging C, me yeah. in the back of my head. I'm like, what are they? Something's different about their sound. What is it? And, and it's, lots of people do drop D, but you do drop C. Lower octave. We it, take it to eleven. Yes. Yeah. Straight up. Right and, and and if you learn what I did to this guitar, you would probably <laughs> fucking disown me. Because I literally took it from the lightest gauge to one of the heaviest gauges, and he was like, "You are destroying." The tone from this guitar, I'm like, well, it still hey, sounds man, it's great. Just, it's just wooden metal. Yeah, yeah, dude. I mean, it still sounds fucking wonderful. Nice. And the the amp that you got, uh, you you Brian, <laughs> fucking guy, brain. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh no, it's fine. You fucking you you doctored that that amp. Up. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. Beautifully, yeah. and then Drew taught me how to dial it in. Yeah. So thank you, Drew. Yeah. And then. uh Paul plays a music man, his second one, because his first one got stolen out of the garage. Yeah. So he's got he's got some top dollar shit, and he's on his second one. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Bao plays an electric Yamaha violin. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yamaha. I bought that. Also gifted to her. Right? Yeah, I bought yeah. that for her birthday yeah. one year. That was her birthday present. Shout out to family. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dude is tight knit man. Yeah. So that's where we're at. I I do mine's pretty easy. I use a Shure SM58 for my mic. It's pretty much standard live yeah. local mic, but right. I always like the sound. 
Well, we um, tried the wireless thing. At, at I tried the wireless thing. At, yeah, it, it just, just it was work. it wasn't. It, 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 it was you want to be able to just fight yeah. with the cord. So right? instead, I use signals um, better. There's something about holding the cord and holding the mic. It, it's the not that was the signal special. was always yeah. wonky oh. for vocals because you're moving around so much with That's it. True. It just it just it was just wasn't getting the right sound. And it was an SM58, you know, wireless. It just didn't sound right. So instead, I have it hooked up to um, a huge, long ass uh, Megami XLR cable. Uh -huh. Megami. That is one thing we do. We do buy good cords. <laughs> yeah, Megami. Yeah, is, new musicians. Is, if you're gonna spend the money, spend it on the stuff that it always breaks. Yeah. Uh, Hardware, yeah. The the cords, Megami cord absolutely. that I have, I think it costs as much as the mic costs, yeah. but it's worth it because. That cord is so flexible, and I can get as crazy as I want with it, and it's fine. It's not going to fuck it up. It's not right. stiff. You get those cheap, thick, stiff cords, and you know if it's stiff, it's brittle. You yeah. don't want that. Nope. You want one that's going to be flexible and oh, move. Absolutely. You ever did the Jim Morrison? <laughs> no, I don't think I have. I don't think you have. Yeah. I think I have. Call. No. You seen the, the movie The Doors? Yeah. He's, he does that. He yeah. hits somebody in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, no, I just don't think I've ever done that. Um, we I haven't I, had any lawsuits now. No. <laughs> I, I have done the, I'll, I'll swing it to, to catch it, you know. I'll, I'll yeah. do that move Pretty sometimes. smooth, though, right? It's, yeah. yeah, I try yeah. to be, yeah. you know. And oh. I'll, I'll do the cone in where you kind of back and forth. <laughs> yes. Right? You like you got the sword, you know. I do a little of that. I, I've been guilty of that a few you times, know? yeah. You know, choke people with the Choke oh, myself, you know, a little bit and wrap Whoa. myself. Yeah, but, no, I've never done that. No, no judging here. Yeah, no shaming. I'd be afraid to to lose that connection between the XLR and the mm -hmm. the mic to put that much torque on it. Just went on it. All right, Maybe but torque's not the right we word. Too much centrifugal force on it. Not that much. Right on. Not that much. Um. All right. From from gear you're currently rocking. Any dream gear that somebody's lusting after? Any Wayne's World moments? No. Someday you'll be mine. No, you're happy. No. If I, I would not like to, I would no. like to find another no. Carlo Rebelli less than six hundred bucks online that is exactly like mine. I, I, I'm driving my dream truck, playing my dream guitar in my dream band. So I really, well, I no. made it. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I don't, because I mean, I don't go and play guitar, so I don't know. I mean, of course, I can sit down at Guitar Center and play something like that's great. But I don't know how to use it. <laughs> but the best thing in your life is your girlfriend. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah that's true. You're welcome. <laughs> yes, honey. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like 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 my other ankle to be bionic, like my right one is now. <laughs> That'd be pretty sweet. Then I that wouldn't have to worry about both of them. But, the Six thousand uh, dollar man. Yeah. Where where did it go? He was right here. <laughs> That'd be pretty rad. But, Dude, uh, stage dive to the bar. <laughs> yeah, that's is something. There there we go. Dream gear. I would like to have a bigger, brighter projector. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the best answer I got to that so far is Rody. Uh, we got six of us. Yeah, I think we did <laughs> no, okay. But somebody was like, I want a roadie. Because he, he, this is a person course. who always brought a full stack. And always, yeah. like, they played bigger shows. That's why we started shows. playing, yeah. breaking it down, yeah. I, and I mean, there are gigs where you're like, I feel like a weirdo with this half stack. Oh, but I, totally. But, I, but all I have is a Fender Frontman 25R uh, as an alternative. And that's just weird. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, a lot of times when we played Double Down, it felt like our big stuff was just too big. It was like, too much, yeah, yeah, dude. It was it was way loud. Yeah. You know, here's the thing. If you're playing a big place, you're going to get mic'd. Yeah. Right? In which yeah. case, you don't want it that loud. Right. And, well, we've all seen the fakers if, who have the half stack yeah, yeah. behind them is the amp <laughs> yeah. that makes all the sound. Of and if, the you're, and if you're playing a small place that's not mic'd, if you've got half stacks, you're going to blow them out. Yeah. Yeah. There's just no need for it. Yeah. Right. The only time I could that I felt justified having a half stack, I mean, I got it, I got the, the actual cabinet for free, so yeah. <laughs> pawn shop, baby. Yeah. Um, but was was House of Blues and LBCS, just because of the size of the venue. And the mm. other one was what was the other one? It was well, uh, stage sound is very important if the stage is that big. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Make sure that you could hear. Oh, of course, outside. Yeah. Uh, uh, I did. We did a few outs, outdoor gigs where I was like, I'm really glad I have this half stack. Yeah. Because just micing my little amp through the the PA isn't the same. Um, all right, so so no real dream gear lusting other than bionic legs. Yeah, got it. I just wish I knew what the fuck I was doing more. Than <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wish computer. I could play better than gear. No, I wish I had. Hold on, hold on. I'm completely inept. Yeah. Like I have a little bit of a of an ability, but if I if I feel like if I knew what the fuck I was doing with my intelligent sounds, I'd probably sound like fucking Just, Joe Santriani. You know? I have I good like news for shit. you. 
Right. You're already light years ahead of most people in the nineties. What? You, you, you're well, so you're far at least ahead twenty of, years ahead thanks, of people. Thanks, Drew. <laughs> yeah. You know, I appreciate you, sir. But that's something too. Like, I don't know if we have dream gear because normally, if we decide we want something, we just get it. Right. Yeah, that is right. true too. We'll just buy it. Right. Yeah, I was afraid of this. This this is uh, carry on amongst yourselves. Yeah. Oh, of course. Technical break. Camera's dead. Hey. So, we're actually on the last question. So that worked out good. Yay. Perfect. Uh, I wanted to ask, this is the advice portion of things. Actually, no, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask one of those. Are we getting advice? Because that would really help us out a lot. Yeah, <laughs> <you should. laughs> yes. You, you really got to start doing your job better. Stop making, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'm going to ask one of those usual interview questions that we all hate. So forgive me for this one. Perfect. How would you describe your band's musical style? Oh, God. Elevator pitch. Go. <laughs> oh, shit. I, and, I, and I don't want to be that band like, just listen to it. Um. Wait, wait, wait. I got it right here. Uh, yeah, and that's, yeah, that's, that's even. Sci-fi drunk surf punk with cosmonauti. <laughs> that's tough. It's very yeah. tough. It, it, yeah, that's good, though. It, it, if, it, it sounds so pompous to be like, oh, it sounds like everything. Well, it sounds no, like Sheikhs of Neptune. Coming yeah, from me, so it doesn't because I have no influence. <laughs> All right, on, what do we sound like, Brandon? What the fuck? I have no idea. <laughs> pompous <laughs> ass. It's the fucking... Well, I sound like this. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it has some undertones of this and that. What that and this is, I have no idea. I mean, it's it's loungy in parts, it's jazzy in parts, it's punk in parts, it's metal in parts. I'll tell you, my favorite song is My Time Manny. That's one of it's my very favorite loungy. songs. Okay? Yeah. But that shouldn't take away from the the craziness of every Like other mystery tune. and like oh, mystery is metal as fuck. Well, let me it's redirect the question. Insane. Let me redirect the question. Perfect. If you had to come up with a tagline for your band, what would it be? Mm. One sentence that fuck your anus harder. I, th- I can't. I can't. I can't disagree with that. Yeah. <laughs> Put that on a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> we got some beer koozies with fuck your anus. It's, it's pretty. Oh, really? Aggressive. Yeah. It's pretty um, aggressive. Yeah, it's aggressive. It's a. It's aggressive. Uh, it's fun. It's it's a, it's storytelling. It's a. And I don't even because like the first album we were kind of coming up with that it was very much like sci-fi surf punky, but it's not really that anymore. Yeah, no, I mean we have we, we still have those elements, rest, you yeah. know, but it's not. It's more. It's it's heavy in the storytelling. Mm-hmm. That that's I think man, the story it's, goes it's first. all about the storytelling. Okay. So, so some comedy. sort of narrative, so yeah. maybe a, a frolicking narrative in outer space. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I think I can sum you up with three of your song titles off of this new album. Okay. All right. Technicolor blood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, happy hour mm-hmm. and attack of the Tiki Titans. Yeah, that, that that's 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 fair. fair. Go. Yeah. Totally fair. Yeah. All right. Wait, are we good? Are we good? And then of course we got Space Wizard. This, this, this. Uh, you know what? I got. It. I got it. Here we go. Whoa! On, on the, the stove. Perfect. On the fire. Just, just burn it. There we go. Oh yeah. Stay. Sit. Stay. Yeah, you know, it's been five years. You think we would have prepped for this question more than this, but yeah. I don't know. No, no. We don't, we don't, right I think that's you. that's a big thing is that I don't go in to write a song and think I want to write this particular song. If I was, I would just write Fushu Mang by Smash Mouth all over again and just be happy with it. I, I um, do I do have one answer prepped. Remember we got that question once, what section of the music store would uh, your CD go? Ooh, I got the answer for this one, right? I'm going to steal that. So here that we go. Cool. So here we go. Was so it just fiction? No, 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 no. Check it out. So I want you to say... I hear this world music okay and i'm gonna be like no 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 out of this world music okay nice so th- you know what there it is that's a complete out of this genre, world music yeah. that's that's yeah. what we are it out of this to, world it has to be otw O-T-W. for life you're, you're, you're welcome to use that go for it out of this world music awesome for life all right <laughs> very fair last question and this okay. one is for the new musicians all right let's say someone comes up after a show and says how do i sound like you <laughs> What's one piece? We're of holding advice? auditions. Yeah. Yeah. Brandon's not going to play anymore. <laughs> what, what's what's one piece of advice that you wish someone had given you when you started in the music? Have business? fun. That's oh, it. Uh, first and foremost, have fun. I if mean, it's not fun, the, just stop. That's the easiest answer. Yeah. Just mm. go if someone if someone's going to take the fun away, it's it's that's it. Do you're, you're not gonna... care what the fuck people think. Yeah. First and foremost. Yep. I mean, I. I, I yeah. That's it. Yeah. I mean, it Play for you. Is. Yeah, yeah. That, that's I mean, all it is. You're going to reach the best of your ability Don't as far as you want to go. 
Um, Straight up. You know, there's shredders and there's chuggers out there. You know, you can pick one. But if don't, you're going to have fun... Don't, don't try to be an artist. Just be an entertainer and mostly entertain yourself. You're good to go. Yeah. No, the, yeah. People that like it is a bonus. Yeah. Anybody yeah. that likes this band, man, that's a huge bonus for me. Honestly, you can tell when a band is having fun and when it's not a work thing. Uh, and, and for me, as, as an audience member, I'm like, yes, I want to pay attention to what you're doing. And as a musician, I'm like, yes, I see that you're having fun, which <laughs> yeah. means you guys, yep. you practice it enough. It translates. You practice enough so that you can mess with stuff, and everyone in the band's gonna be like, ha ha ha. Yeah. It's like jazz band. Oh man, if we're not <laughs> fucking each other up, then it's, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm grabbing Paul's bass the entire show. Oh. I think it's all about could... vibrations, right? Yeah. So, so whenever you look like you, as a band, you could not be a great band at all, but you're having fun. That oh, will translate band I watch. to yeah. the audience. And it's Speaking of great bands, that are not there. great bands that are having fun. Straight up. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just having fun, no matter how well you play, just the vibration that you put from your band to... Well, I mean, I, I feel so. like when I get up there, I feel like we're having a party, right? Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Well, as soon as I hear the intro music going, I'm just like, it clicks, and it's like, it's time for the party, Dreams right? Yeah. When you get up there, it, like, we're having a party, Absolutely. and everyone's invited, you know? And it, I think... People feel that, or at least I'm trying to express well, that. Well, I think we're a and mind. everybody. Uh, <laughs> well, well, we are. Yeah. I mean, all I know is there were a lot more people in that crowd when you all started playing, or, and than there were for previous acts. No disrespect. And you think so? Uh, yeah. And what show? Dagmar. The last one. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'm telling you, I, and maybe it was just the robot taking space. I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> I was just like. Holy shit, these sometimes people are here to see like that. they're afraid of us. Well, There's you know, lot, sometimes sometimes you'll go to a show and the audience is mostly there just to see every band. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's a group there that are there for geez, that band, and as soon as you're done, they're gone. No, I, I have to have, like, a, a, I have this re reservation when certain, like, people who have no idea who the fuck we are, mm -hmm. they see us setting up, and they see the... Colored gear, they see everything, and they see <laughs> shirts, and you know, a couple of us are having our fezes on. So you're probably thinking, like, what the, f what the hell is going on? And like, if they think that after I have we're done, no idea. Awesome. <laughs> and then, and then we start playing, and then they they potentially come up to us, and they're like, I had no idea what you guys were gonna be like, but you got. I, I, I you guys even, rock. Yeah, yeah I, I have you no guys fucking rock. clue. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. Like you guys were gonna be that heavy. I think I said this, to Drew. I'm like, thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's all you can say. I think I said to Drew because that was my first time seeing you guys. Uh, and and Drew came out and I was like, great set. I don't know what I expected, but it wasn't that. Yeah. But I liked it. Right. You know. And that's yeah. Uh, it's out of this world. Hey. There you go. <laughs> right, bringing it back. Totally. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming on the thank show. You thank you so much, much Josh. I want to thank. Much. No problem. I want to thank you guys for watching. Definitely click the link down below to get your copy of Attack of the Tiki Titans. And while you're there... Is that is that still free? It's free. What? Free? You oh, charged no. me 20 bucks. I'm just kidding. <laughs> wow. I think you can listen to all it's three free albums free on digitally, digitally yeah. But if yes, you want yeah. the CD the way it was meant to be, let us know. Yes, yeah. with the poster. With the poster. And the badass. Sorry. And the sweet artwork. Oh, oh, nice. I think we're on everything now. Yes, yeah. sir. But... There Tiki Titan. Tiki Titan is not is on online Bandcamp. Yet. Yet. It's only on Bandcamp. Okay. It is on. It is on Bandcamp. It's it is, not. Yes. It is only on Bandcamp. Only on Bandcamp. Right. right. So all the links down will be down there, but the link for this one will definitely be down there. While you're at it, if you feel like supporting this channel, help me help the local scene. I got merch. Room Six Shop. I've got my own CDs out there. You know, there's a link tree uh, link down there. If you want to be on the channel, whether reviewed or interviewed, come on, drink my booze. But also, <laughs> we'll have a good time. Remember to be amazing. I think. Are we gonna have a music video? Sure. Giggity. I guess we are. All right. <laughs> Some point. We'll see you next time on Room Six. Say goodbye, guys. Cheers. Thank you so much. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. There's always one who has to do something. <laughs>
more so. I'm the sexy waist that makes you wanna put your hands all on me. I'm a tasty disproportionate morsel. I'm not the bear, beautiful baby. The baby just look at me now. I've got all the best features. I'm your favorite creature. I'm down, where'd you look at me now? My tail is coming in a bit slowly though, but don't worry, baby, it'll get there. If you can get past all the bumps and the scratches, then maybe you can get past the hair. Some call it pheromones, and some call it mud. But baby, I just call it under our fuck. Attached to my ass is my unborn twin. You can call him Jeremy Bradley. 